Lord, to help the world and help us, Lord, in this dilemma that the world is in with this pandemic. Lord, look down upon us and have mercy and solve this problem, my God, that things might return to normal again. There's nothing that God cannot do. He told us to trust in you with all our heart. Lord, we're asking you to have mercy and move miraculously and do the things that we cannot do ourselves. So remember these islands here as well. Give our leaders, Lord, added wisdom and understanding that they may be able, Lord, to know how to handle this problem. Remember those that are suffering from the disease and those that are sick on their beds and painful and hurting. And Lord, visit their bedside tonight, we pray, and rebuke this sickness in the name of Jesus. Remember those that have lost out, lost their interest in the things of God. Those, Lord, that don't, no longer love you. We're asking you, Lord, to move in a very unusual way and help them, Lord, to return to the fold of God. Continue with us in this service tonight. In a very unusual way, we pray. And will not fail to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. We're going to be favored now with a solo by Sister Christine. And, and that will be followed with one by Brother O'Leary. Many years I longed for rest, perfect peace within my breast, and I often sought the Lord alone in tears, but I would not pay the price, would not make the sacrifice, so I wandered on and on. For many years, let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. May all self be slain, my friends, the only Thee. Though it costs me grief and pain, I will find my life again. Just to lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. Then one day, while bowed in prayer, Jesus whispered to me there, Take my cross and follow me to Calvary. Oh, how hard it was to die. And all self to crucify, just to lose myself and find it, Lord, in thee. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in thee. May all self be slain, my friends, the only thee. It costs me grief and pain. I will find my life again just to lose myself and find it, Lord, in thee. Now the blood has been applied through his power I'm sanctified, and the Savior gives me calm and victory yes he took away my sin washed and made me pure within oh I lost myself and found it Lord in thee let me lose myself and find it Lord in thee May all self be slain, my friends, the only thee. Though it costs me grief and pain, I will find my life again. Just to lose myself and find it, Lord, in thee. 
bring at least one soul, O Lord, to Thee. Here I give myself away. Take me, use me, Lord, I pray. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. May all self be slain, my friends, see only Thee. Though it costs me grief and pain, I will find my life again just to lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee.
We're going to read responsibility number 42 from the hymnal. Back your hymnal, number 42, page 469. The gospel for all people, as soon as they get it on the screen, we'll read number 42. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and great is to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, after that, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Now, as you all Christ the sea of Galilee, And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men altogether. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of that passage of scripture as well. Sister Leela will sing for us at this time.
The congregation will sing number 269 from the hymnal. Before we do that, I would like to make the announcements. There will be a, a regular service here on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There will be no services here on Saturday, uh, Christmas Day. The services here will be on Sunday the 26th. Morning worship service, Christmas worship service on Sunday morning, and a service again on Sunday night. There will be no services here, here again until Wednesday night this week, and then Sunday. 269. After this, this song is finished, the congregation may, may be seated, and the choir will close off the song service.
Brother Dwayne will be bringing a message tonight. May the Lord bless him. Let us give him our best attention, please. Brother Dwayne.
Many of us are feeling overwhelmed tonight. Allow the Spirit of God to just touch your heart. We don't even need to preach a sermon. If you need something from God, come and get it tonight. I need Him. I want to be closer to Him. Open your hearts to Him tonight. Without Him, I would be drifting.
is here tonight. Lord, hallelujah. The Bible says where the presence of God is, there's liberty. Thank God for the liberty tonight. Despite all that's going on in this tumultuous world, God is still with his people. And yes, the Ganeda, he's still in control. It may not seem so sometimes because of all the chaos around us. But God is still God. And beside him there's no other. And we can trust on in him tonight. We can cast all our cares on him. Because he cared for us. Yes, yeah, Sister Sidney. Amen. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is real tonight. Thank the Lord. If you have your Bibles, please turn for a short while tonight to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we will read and we will use that in combination with 2 Corinthians 9 and 15. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love? I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love? I am nothing. Do I bestow all my goods to feed the poor? And do I give my body to be burned and have not love? It profited me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. It vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. Do not behave itself unseemingly. Seek it not her own. Is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in the truth. Bear it all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. Endure it all things. Love never failed. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is, in part, is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as I also am known. Now abide it faith hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. For the next few min minutes, I would just like us to focus on that word, those four letters, love. Love drew him down to earth. I preached 
The same message in East End this morning, the Lord gave me this message to share. And by the help of the Lord, I'm going to do my best. I don't get so wrapped up in what time of year Jesus was born. Some historian put it around June or July. But that doesn't matter to me. As Brother Ray preached here last Sunday, it doesn't matter when he was born. We know that he was born. Amen. And his birth was like none other. That birth, that stable birth changed the entire world. Amen. But you see, what drew him down to earth was love. It was his undying love for humanity that brought him down to a stable. It was his undying love for a lost and, and dying world that drew him down. Isn't love a beautiful thing tonight? Amen. I'm telling you everything about love is beautiful. It feels good. It looks good. It's warm. Amen. It's attending. Yes. It's loyal. Yes. It makes you feel good about yourself. Yes. You know something, I, I, and I, I've been, I was thinking about the world tonight. Does the world need more money? No. Amen. Yes. Does the world need more money? Trillions and trillions of dollars all around the world and problems like this. Even billionaires that have it and have it in abundance don't even know what to do with it. Because love can't satisfy the longing of your soul. I'm sorry, money can't satisfy. Amen. Does the world need more material things? Does Cayman need more material things? We have some of the best homes. Some of the best cars. Some of the highest grade material things that money can buy. But look at the social problems right here in this island nation. They say we are the fifth largest financial center in the entire world. Come on. But poverty right here. Social problems right here. Amen. All around came on society. There are problems. And I'm not trying to paint doom and gloom. But I'm trying to bring you to a point tonight. What the world needs is love. What came on need is love. What this society need is love. Amen. As an island nation, we have drifted too far apart. And instead of becoming, instead of being our brother's keepers, we have become each other's competitors. Everyone wants to have an advantage. Everyone wants to be better than the other. Competition is rampant. It's a dog eat dog world. I'm going to best you and I'm going to do it anyhow I can. That's not the, that's not the world that Jesus came and died for. Amen. You see, Jesus came to teach us how to live and how to love one another. Everything about him is unique. Isn't the story of Jesus beautiful tonight? And it doesn't matter how often we hear it. And how often we read those beautiful Christmas uh, stories. It's so fresh. And it's so beautiful. Because it tells a story. The greatest love story ever told. Jesus. The son of God was born in a lowly stable. 
He didn't come with pomp and fanfare. He didn't have a big entourage around him. He wasn't born in, in, in a rich uh, home. It was a lowly stable. A place where animals were fed. And kept. And housed. His bed wasn't of satin. And cotton. It was made of straws. And hay. Amen. But there he was content to be born. To teach us the greatest lesson. Of humility. God himself was content to be born in a stable. But if some of us don't have the chief spot. We're out of fix. Christianity is a humble life. We don't always have to have the spotlight. Come on. It don't always have to be us. This is about God. And whatever we do, we must give him the glory. Amen. Sister Cindy sing the song, what will we do without Jesus? The shepherd. Amen. He's the reason we wake up in the morning. He's the reason we live and breathe and move and have our being. He's the reason we're here tonight. It's not about us tonight. It's about him. And I'm going to tell you. If we remove ourselves more. And allow him. Amen. To have his way. We would see much more accomplished. Amen. Love is beautiful. If there ever was a people. Who should live in love. And harmony. It's God's people. Amen. Amen. There is no greater example, no more powerful example than when the world see the people of God living in unity and in love one with another. But the enemy doesn't like that. The enemy seeks to cause inroads among us. Amen. Where there's peace, he wants war. Where there's love, he wants animosity. Amen. And when you and when, when a brother or sister is doing right, the devil will try somehow to bring them down. The Bible said we must put on the whole armor of God. Amen. From head to toe, someone said. Put on the whole armor of God. And I find myself recently, every time I wake up in the morning, I say, God, clothe me with the armor today because I need it. Amen. Amen. The battle awaits us every single day. And we need the whole armor of God. Love is beautiful. Love drew him down to this earth. Now let's consider the scripture. Let's really consider this word. Love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. This is not being the most talented. There are many people in this world who are very eloquent. Amen. Have the ability to speak. But they have not the love of God in their heart. Amen. I have a barber that usually comes to my house every two weeks to cut my hair. And he looked a bit disturbed. He goes to a very, almost a mega church right here in Cayman. And I could tell he was really disturbed. I said, well, what happened to you, man? What's wrong? He said, what's going on? He said, I don't, I don't understand it. I said, well, what will you tell me? I might be able to help you share it. He said, his pastor got up in the pulpit and told his congregation that he wanted to upgrade to a Bentley. A hundred thousand dollar car. And that he was expecting the congregation to pay for it. Let me tell you. 
me tell you something. You have the truth. You better embrace it. The Bible said, buy the truth and sell it not. Some vicious people out there in the pulpit taking advantage of God's people. Thank God for the church of God. Amen. I love the church of God. And I'm a church of God loving man. Taking advantage of the people. Do I have the gift of prophecy? And I understand all mysteries. Come on. And all knowledge. And do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains? And have not love, I am nothing. Some people could preach it real good. But when it comes down to showing little warmth and lovableness, they're wanting. Amen? Have not the love of God in their heart. Now this scripture tells us something about love. Look at verse 4. Love suffer it long. That's a strong word there. Suffer it long. Let me tell you something. In this race, we're going to have to suffer some things out. I admire Sister Olita so much. We love you, Sister Olita. That's why we all come to you. But we've seen you go through some things. And she's still there. Amen. Love, suffer it long. When you love someone, and when you love something, you'll suffer with it. It doesn't matter how hard it gets, you'll stay with it. Remember when you first got married, how fresh it was. And you go through that honeymoon stage. Everything is so new. So special. Amen. You don't want to be separated from each other. Everything is just so beautiful. But the honeymoon stage won't last forever. Amen. The, the honeymoon stage moves into the reality stage. And that reality is... Two people, two different people coexisting together. And sometimes it gets real tough. Real rocky. Real hard. But amen. But because you, 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 because you face a few tough days in your marriage doesn't mean you abandon the ship. Love suffer it long. And it's kind. So it is in your Christian walk. We must suffer this out. Amen. Someone once said, you don't know the flavor of the tea bag until it's dipped in hot water. And that is so true. Love envy it not and vaunt it not itself. You know, in the church of God, there ought not to be any competition. If one brother rejoice, we should all rejoice with him. If one suffer, we should all suffer with them. Come on. That's the church that Jesus came to build. Amen. This is, this is about God and his work. The furtherance of his kingdom. We're not building own here but we're building the kingdom of God and when God anoints a man or a woman and uses them it's for his glory amen, amen. 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 don't allow the devil to make you insecure about you you focus on what God gave you to do amen let me tell you something and I'm not being flattering to nobody. But my heart's delight and desire is to see my brethren doing well. 
I always hope to be an encouragement to any I come in contact with. I know I'm not perfect. I have my things that I have to work on. And I covet your prayers on my behalf. But I love my brethren. And I've said it time and time again. If Brother Dwayne have to destroy any to elevate himself, you'll be waiting a long time. I don't do that kind of thing. I don't have time to go to nobody about you. I don't have time to talk about one of you. My mission is to pray for you, encourage you, and to help you make it to heaven. For we be brethren. This is about love. Amen. Yes. It do not behave itself unseemly. Verse 5. Seek it not her own. Is not easily provoked. And it what? Come on. Think it no evil. Amen. The Bible says love worketh no ill to his neighbor. But love is the fulfilling of the law. And the Bible also says to the pure, all things are pure. But to the wicked, amen. I see Sister Maria somewhere having lunch with someone. Can I think good about her? I see Brother Isaac somewhere having a business lunch. Can I think good about him? Amen. Some people too bad mind. They think evil about everybody. And they make a hill out of a mole. Create stories that don't exist to destroy someone else. Think it no evil. Amen. Rejoice it not in iniquity. We're talking about love. Love, love, love. Rejoice it not in iniquity. You don't rejoice when your brother fall. You don't rejoice when your sister fall or make a mistake or have a slip. Amen. You're there to pray for them, to lend them a helping hand, to help them on, to help them recover themselves. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. This is a lot more than dressing the part. Come on. Some people can dress it real good from ankle to the crown of the head. But to live it is different. Love is real. Love is real. Amen. And when it's real, you can see it. You can feel it. You love to be around it. Because it's real. Listen to this. Bear it all things. Now that is deep. That's not shallow at all. Amen. Bear it all things. Let me tell you something. Some people you trust in are going to disappoint you. And you are going to have to bear it. And something's cut deep, Sister Esther. But we are going to have to bear it. That is the love of God. Bear it all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. And what? That's the key word tonight. Endure it all things. What do you mean I got to put up with this one? Yes, you do. What do you mean I got to put up with him? Yes, you do. <laughs> what do you mean I got put up with her? Yes, you do. It said bear all things. Now you see that young lady over there, I love her with all my heart. Amen. But we'd have some hot ones sometimes. She's a strong minded Kemanian woman. 
if we, if I had to go run down a divorce court for every little row, what kind of a marriage would we have? Where's the loyalty? Amen. Amen. People are making a joke out of marriage now. An absolute joke. And it's disgraceful to see two Christians go down to the divorce court. I can't think of a, a worse example to the world. If two Christians can't work their problems out, somebody gone wrong. Somebody gone wrong. Bear it all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. Endure it all things. Verse 11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. God expects us to grow. We can't stay in one spot. The Christian life is always moving. Amen? And evolving. That's the word I'm looking for. If you stay in one spot, you're going to get left behind. And we must do the things that are necessary and are conducive to our spiritual growth. It's up to us. We preach here all this but time and time again. It's an individual walk. In an individual life, we are responsible for it. When I was a young convert, I was so glad to have the guidance of some elders who took interest in me. And I wonder today if that's, if that's, that's the area that we're failing our young people. Let me tell you something. Sister Nora got hold of me. And it would be Evening lectures, advice, you don't do this. This is how you conduct yourself. To this very day, she's one of my heroes. Obviously, my dad taught me how to behave, how to conduct myself. When I was coming to the Cayman Islands, he church, and he lectured me and told me how it goes. Don't embarrass me. You go up there, you're under Brother James' ministry. You obey your pastor. And he was torn. He wasn't, it wasn't no Nancy story. But it's so hard to talk to people now. Like that. It's a different era and a whole different culture. Amen. But my father could sit me down and talk to me. This is how you do it. And it helped me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brother Dwayne don't do anything here. Either in Georgetown or East End. Without he asking me first. Yeah. And I feel that's the way it ought to be. Yeah. I don't push myself into anything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's not the way you do it. No. You allow the leadership to lead the work. And you don't turn into spoiled children when you don't have your way. Amen. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. There are it's, someone always say here, it's better higher up. So the higher we climb in Christ, the better life gets. Amen? The higher we climb, the better life gets. And I believe that tonight. Love brought him down to the stable. Love allowed him to suffer, to bleed, and to die for all of us. Amen. Amen. He didn't come to seek his own. He didn't come for fame or popularity. 
Amen. He didn't come to carve a name in stones. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He came for the poor, for the downtrodden, for the outcast, for the rejected, for the despised. Those were the one he went to seek out. He traveled the highways and the byways, the dusty roads of Galilee, healing the sick, raising the dead, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus came for you and for me. He came to give us something much better than this world could ever give us. The love of God makes you a better man and a better woman. A better husband and a better wife. A better employee. A better employer. A better citizen. A better government. Oh, if government would include him more, we would see more positive things in the land. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. In this Christmas season, let's think more of Him, include Him more in our lives. All of us could do more of that. His love is like anything else if you haven't experienced it if you haven't experienced it tonight you need to experience it his love transforms you it takes you out of that old gutter that old sinful gutter takes you out of the miry clay set your feet upon a rock and establishes your going gives you new ideals new outlook on life amen makes you more upbeat and you know, brethren, I want to say this to all of us tonight. Let's be more upbeat. Because we have God with us. He hasn't abandoned us. Amen. Thank God he, he won't jump the ship. He'll be there with us to the very end. Amen. Through the thick and the thin, he'll be there with us. It doesn't matter where this life takes us. And life is hard. I'm not here being pretentious or to think that because we're Christian, it's always going to be okay. No, we're going to go through some hard places. But you can rest assured tonight. God will be with us. Be encouraged this Christmas season. God bless you. We're going to sing number 162 from the hymnal to close with. 162. Since Jesus gave his life for me, should I not give him mine? I'm consecrated, Lord, to thee. I shall behold thine. Let us all stand, please. Everybody sing it. Anybody left need help again tonight? The altar's open. Since Jesus gave his life for me. Since Jesus gave his life for me. For me, should I not give it mine? I consecrate it, Lord, to me. I shall be holy, thine. My life, O oh Lord. Dale
faintest call. Verse 4. My home and friends are dear to me, yet he is dearer still. In my affection first he'll be, and first his righteous will. My Thank you all for being here tonight and for your kind attention. Remember, this is Christmas week, and we wish you the happiest of Christmas, a blessed one, a peaceful one, a safe one. Praise the Lord. We hope to be here on Wednesday night, which will be the last service before Christmas. There will be no services here on Saturday, Christmas Day. The service is here will be on Sunday, the 26th of December coming, the Lord willing. We trust you'll have a wonderful time, in, not only for Christmas, but in the Lord. Yes. Remember the Lord. Yes. Remember why he came into the world yes. and what he has done for us and what he continues to do for us. Let us bow our heads. Just Sister Juanita. Okay, let us pray for Sister Juanita. You, you Juanita Powell? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, let us bow our heads. Sister Ganita, would you pray, please?